Sorry, beginning of this month, really, when we finally lost lost water in our karst features, those last areas where it would be ponding up. So just a slow, gradual trend over the last few months, for bone dry probably a few weeks now. Florida DEP's Kevin Claridge is exploring the main channel of the Upper Peace River on foot. Along the five-mile stretch in south-central Florida from Bartow to Fort Meade, it's distressingly shallow in some places. In others, it's a series of detached puddles. Here, it's nothing more than a dusty, parched path, bone dry. The water levels are very low right now, if not uh, uh, non-existent because of the, the lack of rainfall. Even in the context of an extended drought, it's surprising to see a river gone dry in a state surrounded by water. A state that receives on average 40 to 60 inches of rainfall a year, making Florida one of the rainiest places in the U.S. The problems in the Peace River watershed represent the challenges facing DEP, water managers, local governments, and citizens around the state. Challenges that were, in many cases, years in the making. Florida was developed historically on a simple philosophy. Ditch it, drain it, get rid of that water. As Livingston says, water management for more than a century was driven by the well-meaning desire to prevent flooding and move water off the land to accommodate agriculture, mining, and development. While the consequences of these historic practices are particularly evident in places like the Peace River watershed, most communities throughout the state are grappling with diminished groundwater supplies, a situation that few people would have thought possible just a few decades ago. We've only now in the last 10 or 15 years begun to realize that by running all that water off the surface of Florida, not only are you potentially creating water quality problems for the receiving water, but you're running out a whole lot of fresh water that could and should be used for water supply. While not all watershed problems in Florida are as complicated as those in the Upper Peace River Basin, nearly half of all rivers, streams, and lakes in the state are considered impaired. Impairment means it doesn't quite meet the water quality goals that, that we uh, in the state of Florida feel is essential for that water body to be what uh, is simply referred to as fishable or swimmable. DEP Secretary Mike Sowell says that restoring health to the state's estuaries, rivers, and lakes is DEP's top priority. The massive effort will span generations and be costly. But that investment is clearly worthwhile when you look at the importance of those watersheds uh, to the quality of life and the economic uh, vitality of the state of Florida. Florida's multi-billion dollar investment in clean water involves everything from putting the oxbows back in the Kissimmee River as part of the Everglades restoration to experimenting with rooftop gardens in Orlando. We have funded an effort at the University of Central Florida to put in what's called a green roof where basically they have planted vegetation on top of one of their buildings where they capture rainwater, it filters through the plants and they recycle it or they use it for irrigation. And it's, it's, it's not inexpensive, but in the long run, it's a lot cheaper than having to clean up a water body that might get the runoff. As Drew points out, green roofs play an important role in future development and stormwater management plans. The here and now of watershed restoration is figuring out ways to clean up rivers and lakes that for decades have received polluted stormwater runoff. Strategies include retrofitting aging stormwater infrastructure in towns statewide and creating urban stormwater ponds that treat pollutants with some of the same technologies used to clean drinking water. New stormwater treatment requirements are meant to help reduce the flow of polluted stormwater into rivers and estuaries. We need to hold more water longer and that means more land needs to be given over to stormwater treatment and green space. In a state with high population growth, that may not be the most popular thing in the world, but that's what it's going to come down to. Protecting groundwater and drinking water supply is also a key component of watershed protection. An extended drought along with ever-increasing demands have pushed Florida's aquifers past their limits. Water conservation is key. So is water reuse. Over 200 billion gallons of reclaimed water has been reused since the project started up in December 1986. DEP's Chris Ferraro is referring to Water Conserve 2, 
where treated wastewater from the Orlando area is stored for agricultural and residential irrigation, as well as aquifer recharge. DEP has been at the forefront of helping communities pursue wastewater reuse programs. Florida is a national leader in the reuse of wastewater, eliminating most wastewater discharge into rivers and bays by reclaiming the water. While DEP and water managers work to protect the water supply and restore the health of rivers and lakes, true watershed protection won't happen unless citizens recognize how they affect water that flows through their communities, says Eric Livingston. We all live downstream of somebody. And that's because we all live within a watershed. Even if you live many miles away from a lake and you're thinking, I don't have any impacts on that water body, well, actually you do. Understanding that personal connection to the watershed is the first step. But DEP Secretary Sowell says the next step is making the commitment to change. When you recognize as a part of the community the connectivity that you have with the river, you then recognize the fact that you can make changes in your habits to help improve the quality of the river. And that's something that we all need to, to accept, that we are connected to the waters in the state of Florida, no matter where you live. And the fact that we can take actions to keep those waters in a pristine state, I think are important to all Floridians.